Hey YouTube, I took Horror 11 here with a retro unboxing and review of the iPod Touch first generation. As you see here, I have both the 8 and 16 gigabyte models. What's cool about this iPod is that the box came in either a box with Macy Gray on it or with Elton John. As you see, I have both. When Apple released this, it came in 8 and 16 gigabytes. So you see, I have three of the four boxes that you can even get. As you see on the top of the back of the box, it says what is included with the iPod, including the earphones and USB 2.0 cable. And on the bottom, it has some of the product information, including serial number. Getting to the unboxing itself, we will take off the lid to reveal the iPod Touch itself sitting in the little cover. So we'll take that out and you can see what it looks like quickly. And then we have the little holder that it was sitting in. And beneath that, we have the container with all of our literature, which includes the product quick start guide, the important product information, the Apple stickers, and the Apple branded microfiber cleaning cloth. So definitely Apple put some nice stuff in there. You also get the earphones, which did not have the remote and mic, but that's just in here to show you what it looks like. You had a dock connector so that you could connect it inside of a dock, which is also another thing that's nice to have. And then you have the 30-pin dock connector to charge your device. Now I want to do a quick comparison of the first generation box with the new iPod Touch boxes, which includes the second generation and above. So obviously Apple put a lot more time and of course money with the better packaging into their iPod Touch packaging. Now it is smaller and plastic, but before it was nice padded black with more of a homey, comfy look. Now you just have the plastic with white paper inside it, but before you had the black box with the bigger design, which I liked, and you had kind of the po padded foam inside and you have more stuff that comes with it, including the microfiber cleaning cloth. On the front of the iPod, you can see it has nothing but the home button. You can see on the bottom of the iPod, we have the standard 30-pin dock connector and the 3.5mm headphone jack. On both sides, there is nothing. And on the top, we have the power button. So now I want to talk about the hardware a little bit more and some of the software. This iPod was actually pretty thin, coming in at just 8 millimeters or a third of an inch. It was also pretty light at just 120 grams. Out of this box, this iPod came with what they called iPhone OS 1.1, but the highest supported OS would be OS 3.1.3, which is running right here. Since this was a first generation device, it was very limited with what you could do. There were no volume buttons on either side. There's just a power button, there's no microphone, speaker, or camera. The only thing you had was Wi-Fi, you didn't have Bluetooth, as you can see by the antenna right there, and the 30-pin dock connector with 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You see in the settings app, you have Wi-Fi, brightness, general, music, video, photos, store, mail, contacts, calendars, and Safari. It does have Wi-Fi, and that's about it. The pre-installed apps on this consist of the weather app, clock, notes, settings, calendar, contacts, stocks, maps, safari, mail, music, and videos, iTunes, App Store, YouTube, calendar, and photos. See, I have a Pandora app here, and something different with this OS is when you deleted it, you had the option to rate it before you deleted it, just to leave your final thoughts about it. So that was not necessarily something better, but it was just something different. When you double click the home button on this, it went back to the home screen or you can configure it to go to music app. So as you see, there was not multitasking on this. And also with this iPod, you do have a QWERTY keyboard and it is the touch one. So it has the same characters as the normal one, but it is a little bit sluggish. Let's see, not too bad here, but definitely not a speed as some of the newer devices. This iPod ran on a 600 megahertz unnamed processor and it did have a 3.5 inch screen with a 2x3 aspect ratio at 480 by 320 resolution at 163 pixels per inch, which is similar to the iPad mini. When Apple started selling these iPods, they released it in black only color in 8 and 16 gigabytes, but later it came out with 32 gigabytes. And with this iPod, you got 128 megabytes of RAM, 
so it made multitasking and anything really very sluggish. Now this was actually pretty fast for the time then. I'm not going to say it's like the iPhone 5 of 2013, but it wasn't too bad. This iPod was released in September of 2007 for the 8 and 16 gigabyte models, but a 32 gigabyte model came out in February of 2008. However, these were discontinued on September 9th, 2008 when the second generation iPod Touch came out. So there you have it, YouTube, the retro review of the first gen iPod Touch. To see, Apple has drastically improved their lineup of not just the iPod Touch, but their whole iPod lineup. So thanks for watching, YouTube. This is iTech411. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. This is iTech411, and I will see you later.